I think I've played almost every weird symbol in existence at this point, so I figured I'd switch it up and check out some prototype symbols. Now there are a good amount of prototype symbols that have turned into production symbols. For example, this is a 20 inch K cluster crash, and then this is also a K cluster crash, but it's a prototype. They look similar, they sound similar, is one worth more than the other? Probably not, but at least you look cool when you have a prototype logo on a symbol. Now I say all that because I bought this symbol thinking that it was just a prototype, but this is an actual symbol now. This is a 19 inch K custom hybrid prototype trash mash crash symbol. It's got all the words in the title. It has this weird double reverse bell thing. And then a bunch of rows of hammering. There's some longer patterns and then some shorter ones. And now to be fair, I've never really been a huge fan of the K Custom Hybrid line, but this symbol actually sounds pretty good. She's nice and trashy. The bell isn't the loudest, but it does have some good dissonance to it. Also, it is very uh, convenient to play. So I'll say good job to Zildjian for getting this out of the prototype phase. Now, if I had to guess, this next one's probably a good example as why not all prototypes make it into a uh, production. I really didn't want to buy this. This is a uh, 10 inch HHX China thing. It's a little bit weird. It has this like inverse bell, kind of like that HHX or AAX, the Zen effects symbol. This one, of course, is just a little smaller and doesn't have the holes or jingles or anything. I had no intentions of getting this symbol. I found a Sabian lampshade, but the guy couldn't find it, so he offered me this instead for a good price. So I bought it because it looked kind of interesting. And I don't know if it's just me, but I've never really liked the sound of mini chinas. So we're gonna play a game of Will It Stack. This is a 10 inch ZBT, I think. Start simple and throw that on top. Let's try this uh, L80 on top, maybe. Now let's try something wacky, I guess. We definitely need uh, a china stacked on top of a china. Can we add this thing somehow? Do the old flipperoo. Kind of dry and crunchy, but it doesn't really fit. I feel like we need this thing in here somewhere. Ooh, yeah. Let's flip that back over now. Definitely my favorite out of the ones I tried, so let me know your favorite in the comments. Now thankfully, I was able to borrow some prototype symbols from Bob, so I didn't blow the budget on this video, but he brought over a ride symbol. It had this like flat flange thing on it, some like weird hammering marks, and uh, it basically just sounded like a ride. <laughs> so Dave is not a fan of this one? I mean, it's just not my sound. If I was like in a Alice in Chains cover band, then yeah, definitely. He had to take that back because he needed it for a gig, but he left some other goodies, including these little cup chimes. We got two six inches. This is an HH and this is an AA. If I didn't mention, these are Sabians, by the way. Then we got two eights. Again, this is an HH and an AA. Also, it's kind of funny on the six inches, they're so small, they didn't have room for their full stamp. 
Bob was saying he got these in 1983, so they're older than I am. But also, uh, Sabian doesn't really make cup chimes, so maybe these are the only Sabian cup chimes in existence. We do need to fix one thing before we play these bells. These hi-hats aren't exactly prototypes, these are also Bob's, but he had Sabian install rivets on them, which I guarantee from listening to the other clips, you had no idea there were even rivets on these. But Bob also brought over this uh, Sabian prototype. This is a 16 inch AAX. I wasn't gonna talk about this symbol because it wasn't the most interesting. It does sound good, but you all know I'll take any chance I get to make a set of 16 inch hi-hats, which made me remember that I have this symbol. This is another 16 inch Sabian prototype. Last year, Sabian sent me a set of symbols. Try saying that five times fast. But the hats were made up of this symbol, which is a 16 inch AAX prototype. If I had to guess, this is like an Apollo hat, but done in the fashion of an AAX. And then the top symbol is this uh, 16 inch HH King hat. But I think we can use this as the hi-hat bottom. And then Bob symbol as the top. Uh, yeah, Bob, I, uh, I'm gonna steal this symbol. Or, actually, better yet, Sabian, you should put these in production. That wasn't the most awkward beat I've ever played. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the eights. They kind of just sound like hi-hat bottoms. But the sixes do sound pretty cool. They're a lot more chimey than the eights. Also, I should mention that these two are the AAs and these two are the HHs. These kind of work as a set, even though they weren't made to be a set. Bob was saying they were trying to recreate the sound of a bell off of a Frank Zappa album, and they made these to see if they were close, but they weren't. They're still really cool and add almost a melodic element to the kit, but uh, to be honest, I have a set of cup chimes that I made myself that I never use, so uh, I'll leave the cup chimes to Gavin Harrison. Who here remembers the Saluda days? They sent me this china like five years ago and I was super stoked when they told me about the idea they had for it. And I probably hit it a few times when I first got it, but really I haven't played it since. The idea is really cool though. This is a double china. So imagine two chinas and one symbol. We got the bell, comes up, flares down like a china, comes up again, then flares down again. But the real question is, does this double the brutalness of breakdowns? And finally, we have this Bob Lazar UFO looking symbol. From what I've researched and from what the seller said, I'm confident that this is a prototype. This is a Zildjian lunar crash, or wait, no, a crescent trash crash, or actually, sorry, a Bosphorus trash crash. Stan Moore, if you're watching this for whatever reason, I love you. This was one of Stanton's creations, and if you couldn't tell, this is a very vital part of his sound, and he always has one of these symbols on his kit. This is a crash symbol, but the idea behind all the craters is that when you ride on it, it gives you like a funky sound. I've always wanted one of these. When I first got into drums, it was the Zildjian Crash of Doom and this thing that I lusted after. So hopefully Teenage R. David R. had good taste and this thing sounds good. This specific symbol is a bit unique compared to the production model. The production model was 20 inches, had a traditional finish and only seven divot marks. But this one is 21 inches, has a brilliant finish and eight divots.
is more of an effect symbol than it is a crash. Most trashier sounding crashes you could get away with on the kit by themselves without another crash, but this is all trash, no crash. I'm not saying that it sounds like trash, but you gotta be careful with this thing, especially when you're bashing on it. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and also check out these videos. I guarantee if you like these symbols, you'll definitely like these.